Today I'm going to look at a question that is oftentimes just misunderstood, um, and that's, can Christians be angry? In fact, some people have even formulated a doctrine about um, a righteous anger, that you're justified in some, in some anger to lash out, which has obviously been misused in a lot of different things, like blowing up uh, abortion clinics, for one. Um, so let's actually address this. Um, a lot of people look at the Gospels where Jesus um, supposedly becomes angry and kicks everybody out of the temple. And that's recorded in Matthew 21, Mark 11, and John 2. However, the Gospel accounts never once say that he was angry. Okay, that's just something to note. It never says, and Jesus was angry. Okay, so that's definitely something to note. Um, in all three of the accounts, it says that. Now, that brings up the question, would a regular man be justified in doing what Jesus did and, and casting people out of the temple? And the answer is most likely no, because when Jesus is questioned, why, how, how are you able to do this? By whose authority? What's going on here? Um, in Mark, he says, um, how did, who did, where did John's authority come from? Um, it's later, it's not in verse 18, it's later, it's like verse 20-something, I think. Um, but then in John, he says um, that I will, I, will, I will tear this temple down, and tear this temple down, and in three days, I will rebuild it. And he's talking about himself. What is he talking about? He's talking about the way that he is the Christ. He is God. So is anyone justified in it? No. Jesus' own reason for why he had the authority to do this was because he was God. So Jesus' basis of authority was that he was God, acting the power and anointing of God. This doesn't justify us following suit. Just because um, Jesus did a lot of things that he expected for us to do doesn't mean, it doesn't mean that he, in turn, expects us to do everything that he did. Does that make sense? Um, Jesus was justified in doing that, but that doesn't mean that we will. Jesus will one day reign in glory, but that doesn't mean that we will. Does that make sense? I hope. Kind of hope so. Did he hit the people or the animals? There is a possibility that when he when he formed the whip, and John's the only gospel that mentions this, okay? It, there's a possibility that when he took the whip and made it, and that he was just hitting the animals and not the people, it's a little bit hard to know. It's a, just a possibility. Also, there's a good chance that the whip is not a whip like we would think of a whip. You know, it was probably something that wasn't very hurtful to hit people with. Um, just because of, he probably formed it from the stuff that was from the animals there. Um, in which case, it wouldn't have been something that would have physically harmed them, just would have been, a phys been sufficient in driving them out. Um, also, it's worth noting that he didn't damage any property or, or anything like that. Um, and there, I mean, he didn't do anything against the law. So that's all something to note. Um, so then that brings us to Paul. In Ephesians 4, 26, where he says, Be angry and do not sin. Don't let the sun go down on your anger. This is the only place in Scripture where we have that, be angry. That should make us stop and ask, is he saying, telling us to be angry or is he saying something else? Never form an entire doctrine off of one vague part of Scripture. Um, I'll come back to that. Um, he's not saying, be angry. He's not giving command for the people to be angry. He's talking about healing relationships within the church. Um, and he's quoting Psalm 4.4, where in the context of Psalm 4.4, David is talking about evil people and telling them to repent from attacking God's anointed. That's the context of, of what Paul is talking about. He's definitely not justifying righteous people being angry, because righteous people turn the cheek. They allow themselves to be persecuted. What does James say? The righteous person doesn't doesn't fight back. Um, <clears throat> so if you get angry, basically what he's saying is, don't don't be angry. But if you do become angry, um, stop sinning. Stop your sinning. So basically, how do you become angry and don't sin? You turn from your attitude. You, 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 you turn from that. Okay, he talks about that. Don't let the sun go down on your anger. Why? He's saying, not literally a day, like uh, of this day, what if you sin after the sun is already down? He's saying, don't allow it to become something else. When you become ang angry, let it go and move on. Because he's talking about healing relationships in the church. Read through Ephesians 4 yourself and see what he's talking about. Um, so he's talking about deal with people, but don't resent the people. I'm sorry, deal with the sin, but don't resent, uh, resent the people. Sin, in a way, should make us angry, to a degree. To a degree. Um, 
it it it, it does it, it, there, God, sin bothers God and it should bother us too. So there is an element of yes, sin should make us angry. But what Paul's talking about here is do do deal with the sin, but don't resent the person. Um, he's talking about healing relationships, not tearing them down, and rebuking someone should only be done for their benefit. Um, also, Paul is talking about church relationships. He's not talking about anger in life in a larger scale. Um, not that it doesn't apply, just that we need to be careful like, oh, well, it's possible to become angry and not sin because I stubbed my toe. Well, let's, I'll look at that in just a second. Um, <clears throat> don't allow it to fester is what he's saying. Don't allow that anger to become something. Just kill it before it starts. Deal with it quickly. That's what, it, before the sin goes down, deal with it quickly. Um, he's not literally um, talking about a day. Resolve the issue is all he's talking about. Um, I'm, I'm on a very short schedule. I've got a class starting in a few minutes, so I've really got to make sure I don't take too long on this. Um, so can someone ever become angry then? Are they justified? Um, I would like to note that it's not addressed really in Scripture, whether a person can become angry and not sin. As you'll see on that last point, God has become angry in points of history. Okay, so... We should think of anger itself as not a sin. But when dealing with people, the question becomes, can you separate anger from sin in a person? And I'm just not so sure you can do that. Hypothetically, if there were no wrong words, actions, or thoughts, and that attitude did not develop into something else, maybe you could be justified. But see, when God becomes angry, it's not like this. You know, I've had enough of you. That's not how God becomes angry. His anger is righteous and just because he's God. And he's the only one who can just deal out righteous and just judgment. Okay? So keep that in mind. Also, when God becomes angry, he doesn't regret the things that, that well, that's a discussion for another day because that takes us into Genesis where it says that God regretted making man. Um, so that's we'll talk about that some other time. Uh, I just don't have the space of time to talk about it now. Um so, hypothetically, maybe. But anger is usually inseparable from sin in people. Um, it, it, even if it doesn't go hand in hand, it leads to sin inevitably within seconds of becoming angry. Um, so let's look at a few examples. You stub your toe. Who left this out here? Or you've just become impatient. You're all, not really impatient at anybody, but then when your wife is talking to you, you're, you're suddenly impatient towards her. Why? Because you stubbed your toe and you're, that anger is there. So now you're becoming angry with her. You're showing your anger towards somebody else. Um, or you stub your toe and you say, you son of a... See what I mean? Anger in people is usually, for the most part, inseparable. Now some people would always say, well, this one time so-and-so happened and I, and I became angry but did not sin. Well, even if that is possible, maybe you do really believe that. I was not there so I can't comment, but... I strongly doubt that, but if that did really happen, that is the exception to the rule and not the rule. So don't look for exceptions. Understand this, the principle. Don't let sin reign through bitterness. Um, here's, here's an example of becoming angry that would obviously be a sin. Pastor keeps leaving the vacuum out. See, um, the whole thing about stubbing the toe, that's not really an interrelationship thing, although it still affects relationships, as I've just said. Um, you, know, you start cussing out, and your kids hear you cuss, and so then you've built something in them. You become angry, and so you become impatient towards your wife. You know, it leads to things. But Paul isn't really talking about a principle, but it, there is a principle there. Okay, He's talking about a certain um, thing in the church that is in a public setting. Not so much, is anger ever justified? So going back to the first point here, it's not really addressed in Scripture whether people can or cannot become angry ever. Not really addressed that much. Um, as a general rule, I would not look for the the hypothetical situation. I would just not allow anger within yourself. Don't allow anger within your own heart. And then, regardless of whether you're ever justified in it, it'll be better. How many times does God say that, that the deeds of the wicked are crying out to him? That the, that the blood that they have shed is crying out to them? People don't have to cry out to God to tell him. He sees, and the, and the evil itself cries out to God. I hope you kind of see what I'm saying here. 
Um, but once again, Ephesians is the only place that says this, so you should be very careful of building your doctrine. And the Gospels never say that Jesus got angry when he um, was in the temple, so that's something to think about as well. Um, don't become too quickly to draw conclusions. Um, but within relationships, don't look for exceptions, but understand the rule. Don't let sin reign. Um, I think I talked everything there. So what about God's um, judgment? Well, God, God judges correctly. God judges righteously. So when he becomes angry and takes his action, it's not because he got tired of that crap. Okay? Um, <clears throat> but we can't say that God sins because he becomes angry either. Um in John, Jesus says, if you would judge rightly, judging, I mean, telling us that there is a correct judgment and an incorrect judgment. Um, this may be hinting towards the fact that um, people judge out of anger and God judges out of what is right and wrong. Um, also, James tells us not to judge our brother lest, um, um, lest things happen. And obviously, he could be talking about um, the same thing here with becoming angry and judging someone out of anger. But you can read that in James for yourself. Um, we'll go ahead and close it off there. I hope that this has answered some questions.